morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Mount, Mountain, the mountains of Idaho. And welcome to Treyer Wilderness. As you can see, we are inundated with snow. There you can see it blowing off the trees. It's pretty crazy, but it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful, and I feel extremely blessed to be able to enjoy our last winter here very much like our first winter here so I am just totally totally stoked good morning Terry <clears throat> I figured I would share our winter wilderness our Narnia with everybody this morning um, it is it is just incredible let me see if I can I don't yeah I'm having a hard time getting around to show you some of the depth of the snow but it is it is very deep and very amazing totally snowshoe weather but it's also chilly so I'm gonna jump inside but I wanted to share that with you <gasps> we have been getting snow Wow that Sun is bright there we go <laughs> okay now it's nice and warm in here and let me just venture over here turn this light on so it's not so dark and plop us right here okay how is everybody happy new year this is the first that we have chatted since the new year and uh, I hope you guys are doing well I'm gonna plug this in just so that we don't have any struggles Oop. there we go okay so I can see a bunch of you out there. Hopefully, our connection is good. Give me some thumbs up if we've got a good connection going on here. <coughs> Excuse me. Mountain Boy came home from school and brought germs. And the Mountain Man and I have been sick ever since. And still trying desperately to fight it. It's, it's one of those that just hangs on. And neither of us have been sick for some time. So, I guess, it, I guess we were due. So... I figured today we would talk about a bunch of different things. The new year hits and one of the great things um, for me is being organized. That is, that is a huge thing for me because there's always so much going on here. Um, I want to share something with you before I dive into that. I had mentioned outside how I'm so thankful to be able to enjoy a winter, our last winter here, which is very similar to our first winter here. Um, our first winter here, we moved from our canvas wall tent with a foot of snow on the ground. And we were living in that tent for eight and a half months while we built this house. And uh, we moved out of the tent into the house. There was nothing in here that was internally framed other than the exterior walls. You know, the bathroom wasn't framed in, our bedrooms weren't framed in. It was just a big open space with a wood stove. And the wood stove heated the house, that's what I cooked on. Um, we used lanterns for light. But we got in here and two days later it dumped 36 inches of snow. Good morning, Miss Diana. Good morning, Tammy. I can see a lot of you out there. Chime in, share with me where you're from. Good morning, Miss Shelley. Um, where you're joining me from, I would love to know. Um, it's always fun to see who's on here, and I can't always see everybody that is joining in. So leave me some comments. Also, that's kind of weird. I'm not getting any comments today, which does seem a little weird because you guys are usually pretty vocal. So um, I don't know if everything's working well or not, but um, I can always check it on my iPad then. But anyway... So we got in here and two days later we got 36 inches of snow. It just kept dumping. It was incredible. The mountain blue was 13 and it was like up to his chest. It was, it was wild. And we started getting snow last Friday. Um, for those of you that enjoy my materials, um, this year's podcasting is going to be recorded live as far as video and then the uh, voice is being uh, put out on iTunes, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, um, Pandora, 
and Stitcher so far. And I think it's on other apps too, but those are the ones that I've placed it on. Um, and last week when I recorded that, I was sitting out while it was just dumping snow and we had about 20 inches of snow on the ground. We now have over 36 inches of snow. And uh, say some prayers for the mountain man. And good morning, Chad. I just happened to see Chad jump on. I was just gonna give him a shout out. The mountain man has been tirelessly working on a snowblower that was gifted to us. It was gifted to us in disrepair. It needed, it needed some major attention. And he has tirelessly worked on it for the last three days. He finally got it running last night. It had all kinds of carburetor issues and uh, he finally got that, it actually running and then it wouldn't blow snow. And what happened is the belt was bad and he looked at me and he said, that's exactly why I don't throw anything away. He put on an old mower belt and that we had and and it was able to blow the snow and he started doing that blew the snow for probably like 40 minutes but he was out there all day so he came in to eat and this morning he went out to use it and the belt was toast it was just a little bit too big so it it blew the belt apart so say some prayers for him because he just got in the truck thankfully this is actually a light snow it looked like it was going to be really heavy but it's a light snow so he put all four chains on and pushed out through 36 inches of snow it was up over the bumper so i watched him as he went around the loop here he made it that far i don't know if he made it all the way out i'm supposed to be getting a text message when he gets to town so hopefully Fingers crossed and lots of prayers lifted before I got on here that he makes it out of here to go get two belts for the snowblower and some gas. Um, but we have a mile long lane and uh, uh, you saw all the snow. So it's gonna be a challenge. He was planning to snowblow the mile long lane. That's because our backhoe is down, our plow truck, homestead plow truck is down and uh, it's just what it is what it is you know you guys are all familiar you got to jump from one thing to the next right you got to just make it all happen and pray that it it you know that you can find something and he is tireless he's relentless he will keep working the point of all that was to save us three hundred dollars from having to contact somebody with a cat to come get us out you know to plow us out big shout out to Chad though Chad does um, big equipment repair in Utah with Vandal services um, you can find him at vandalservices.com. Um, he lent a hand and an ear and some advice, and that's what helped the mountain man uh, get in the right direction as far as getting that carburetor repaired. So um, thank you, Chad. <laughs> <coughs> so that's why I'm thankful to be able to enjoy a winter like this because our first winter here was just amazing. We were stuck back here for eight and a half weeks because we didn't have to go anywhere. Um, we don't really have to go anywhere until next week, so but he wanted to go and try to get out of here Try to get this lane open and uh, it's just a really peaceful experience being back here like this And I'm just grateful. I can enjoy it and um, my friend said yesterday. It's kind of cool that We're in the middle of bookends that all the rest of our experience here is in the middle of these bookends and you know it really uh, made me smile because this is our 10th year here and uh, it's just amazing the things that have been experienced here uh, this lifestyle is amazing and although it is our last winter here it is not our last winter living like this there's no other way for he and I to live um, being out and about and back in like this is the way it needs to be for us we are it just fits us well if you know us you understand um, it's just it's how we are made up it is um, a true blessing from God to be back here and living this kind of lifestyle and with uh, what I have experienced with my health living off the grid away from uh, the toxins and the EMFs is extremely important for my body and my healing so there's just no other way for us but how are you guys? I'm not getting a lot of communication, so it's making me think that maybe Facebook is flaking out on us. But I wanna share a couple things with you before we delve into um, my thoughts on organization because I've switched things up this year and I wanna share that with you. But I wanna encourage you guys to check out 
Havoc in Wyoming. Um, this is my dear friend, Millie Copper. You will be able to listen in on my interview with her on Friday on the podcast. Um, it is podcast episode 202. And she's amazing. And uh, if you guys... I think everybody will enjoy this book. She is a new release uh, best-selling author. And she is under um, faith-based books as well as... Um, oh gosh, I just drew a blank on the other topic, but her books are a very cozy apocalyptic book. It creates a great deal of thought in far, as far as preparedness goes, and they are just addicting. They are, they are hard to put down. So the link is below uh, for Millie. It is uh, treyerwilderness.com slash Millie Copper. Her um, prequel to this series is free on her website at milliecopper.com, and her books are very inexpensive. Her new release for uh, part four of the series is coming out on the 22nd and can be pre-purchased now. Um, so check her out. These are books that are family-friendly. Um, they're they, there's no language, there's no blood and guts, there's no sex. It's just challenging you to think out of the box. And it's very, they're very, very well written. I am just so excited for her and so proud of her. She's done a fabulous job and has certainly inspired me to um, finally bite the bullet and dive into the fiction arena. So I'm real excited about that. The other book I wanted to mention to you guys that was released on... Um, Tuesday is the Family Garden Plan, and I have shared this with you before. I interviewed uh, Melissa Norris before the holidays, and um, you can find that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash family garden plan. But this book is something that I think every one of you should have in your arsenal. Um, having hard copy books is really important because... Um, if something were to happen, you know, it would be a challenge to keep our equipment charged. And although many of us have tons of books on our equipment, having the hard copy is important. But I just want to go over the chapters in here to give you an idea what you're looking at. This is a soup to nuts book on gardening and very well written. Melissa doesn't do anything halfway. Uh, she is amazing. Um... Planning your food crops, planning your garden space, choose your plant variety and seeds, getting the garden in the ground, caring for your garden, bringing in the harvest, perennials, plants want, I'm sorry, plant wants harvest for years, herbs and edible flowers, and ad, advanced topics. But she has all kinds of charts and um, guidance in here on what to plant, when, how much to plant to provide for your family. And, you know, when I had her on um, and we were interviewing, um, and really my interviews, it's like sitting on my porch drinking tea or by the fire drinking hot tea. But, you know, it's a good time. And these are with people that I choose. These are people that I am inspired by. These are people that I enjoy spending my time with and that I feel are an asset to what you were doing on your homestead or in, at your home as well. So good morning, Miss Millie, and good morning, Helen. Um, so, you know, I mentioned to her that my family eats a ton of food and serving sizes are always something that we laugh at. But even though, you know, she gives a serving size, even if it is a lesser amount than what your family would devour, you know, it's a baseline and it's something that you can go by and increase. You know, she's like, wow, I never, you know, maybe I might have to change, maybe my numbers aren't going to be good enough for you guys. And these are, I know based on her family, I'm sure it will match ours. Um, but it is a, a guideline that we can follow that will help us so greatly. And this is you know, somebody taking the time to figure out this stuff for us. So if you're new to gardening, it is a great, great place to start. And I love, I love her materials. I love, you know, when you read her books, you feel like you're sitting there with her and 
like I said, check out that as well as Havoc in Wyoming. Um, you will not be disappointed. Millie's books are amazing as well. And um, the links are down below. And you're going to hear me talking a lot more about them. And um, I know that Millie's podcast will be going out on Friday. Um, but she will be joining me again because she's got a lot of things up and coming. So I'm real excited for her and real excited to share her with you guys. So that was a lot of fun, my interview with her. So be sure to check that out. So, <coughs> excuse me. I wanted to talk about organization today because the key thing is everybody wants to accomplish new things in the new year. I don't even talk about New Year's resolutions anymore. They're not even something that I think about because they're just, in my mind, when you want to do something new in your life, it's creating a new habit. It is embracing something that you truly want to accomplish. Good morning, Angela. And, you know, New Year's resolutions, I just think that Everybody takes them so lightly. Nobody ever follows through. I didn't. And when I think of a new habit, that's like a new lifelong thing. Here's living proof of this. This is my journal. I have started writing in it last year. It was something that as I was packing our house, I found tons of journals that were the start of a year and never made it past February or March. Well, this is ingrained in me and it is a must and I treasure that new habit. And I've told you guys in the past that one of my things is being organized. God blessed me with the ability to be organized and for that I am thankful because I really need that, that superpower with everything we do here, with everything I've done with my businesses. So being organized has meant a lot of different things to me over the years. I had shared last year how I worked for a company called Daytimers right out of high school and actually while I was in high school and they are a time management company and because of that I have a ton of different types of binders. I kind of have a leather fetish and so I had a whole bunch of different types of binders um, and had those over the years, you know, one that was portable, one that was desk size. It all varied depending on what I was doing. When I was programming a desk size planner was convenient and perfect for what I was doing, but as I progressed and had children and was more mobile, a portable planner was, was something really important to me. And I always did pen and paper. But um, about three years ago, four years ago, I went all digital because of being sick and flat on my back. Um, I really struggled to keep my mind straight. Evernote became something that was very attached, that I was very attached to, that was the other half of my brain. I share that a lot, um, and I believe the description, in the description below you will find links to that also. Do I have that in there? Yes, I do. So um, there's a bunch of links below that I had shared last year that still pertain to keeping organized, and I've been sharing them all year long. Evernote is one of them. It is something, it's an, um, a note-taking application and has been invaluable in my organization skills. Um, there's different calendar apps. I used Nosby and um, I use Wishlist um, as well. I'm sorry, Workflowy. Um, Workflow is the other app that I use that is a bullet um, listing of things. Um, those have all been huge and I am still in the clouds with all of my data and all my things because I'm all over the place. Sometimes I work away from here, sometimes I'm here, sometimes the internet's off, I've got to be able to access things. So um, I, I keep everything in the clouds. I don't do a lot with paper in my office anymore, filing cabinets. Um, it's, it's just not how I roll anymore, but I switched back to pen and paper this year. I need to see things completely in front of me this year. And I guess that's a transition because of my health as well, that I'm feeling a little more stable and being able to maintain everything. Um, I also have merged all of our businesses under one roof, so I don't have all these separate businesses to keep track of, so it has made things a lot easier. 
But in the description below, I included a link to this because it's a really cool little um, date book. And I wanted something that was pretty hearty um, because I want the Mountain Man uh, being a part of this also. So it is treyerwilderness.com slash monthly weekly planner. It's got the month tab so you can you can access everything for the month right in one view and then following that you've got your weekly setup. So you could use this as a journal if you're looking to start journaling and uh, it's new to you. But if you're also looking to keep track of things and really be organized, I really think this is a great way to go. In the back, it also has that much excess writing paper to keep all your notes and things in here. And I think that is huge because I'm one of those that while I'm working on a client or um, working on Trier Wilderness, for example, I will start jotting things down. I get ideas. Um, so having something accessible is really important to me. Now I do a lot of my work out in the woods. I do a lot of my recording out in the woods, even with the snow on the ground. I will hit my snowshoes and I will do some recording and writing and different things while I'm out there. I'll find a stump somewhere. So I still use my apps, but I come back and this is where everything gets recorded. Being organized is important eliminating the search for things. How many of you go through and just end up having to search and search and search for pieces of little sticky notes, little pieces of paper that you jotted something down on and now you've got to find it. Such a drag, such a drag. And that's why I had originally gone digital so that I didn't ever have to search for anything anymore. And I won't. Evernote holds all of my important information. And my date book holds everything else. Now, oh, there's lots of comments. I'm seeing you guys are, it's not coming up on this app for some reason, but it is here on Facebook. So let me see. So funny watching myself because I am so animated. My hands are flapping like a stinking chicken. So funny. <laughs> anyway, I am trying to find the comments here. So let me see. If I can find them and if it will share them with me. No. All right. I love to be able to field your stuff when I'm talking to you, but it's not going to allow that today. So let's see if I can get on here another way. And I'm glad to see so many of you joining me. We have big numbers today, so I'm excited about that. The other thing I added is my brain dump notebook. And I could use those sheets in the back of the book, but when I do some brain dumps, they're pretty heavy. And uh, I want to be able to have everything in one place so that, again, I'm not searching for stuff. Let me give you an idea of how I use um, Evernote uh, so that I'm not researching for things. One of the ways I do that is, um, for example, the snowblower. The belt that he just went to get will be recorded so that for future reference, if he's out, needs a belt for it, or I'm out and he calls me and says I need a belt for it, I have it in Evernote. And all I have to do is look it up and get the number off of it. Same with oil filters, um, car insurance, um, medical stuff. If there's stuff that you need to reference on a regular basis, or even yearly, and you don't wanna to have to go searching for it, I store it in Evernote so that I can really keep track of things. And to me, that's really important. Okay, awesome, I can see your messages. Kimberly says, I am terrible about organizing. Kimberly, you're not alone. We all have our own superpowers. Thank the Lord that organization is one of mine. I'm sure you've got an incredible superpower and your struggle is organization. This is where we can learn off from each other. I want to share something with you while I am saying that. One of the things that I wanted to share with you guys today was um, from Ecclesiastes 4. Okay, uh, Ecclesiastes 4.9. 
Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. Number 10 is, if one person falls, the other can reach out and help, but someone who falls alone is in real trouble. I love that. I think that represents greatly what we're doing here, is that we are trying to help one another succeed, um, share ideas. You guys share ideas sometimes that trigger me, that inspire me, that are something I never considered. You know, this is not a one-way street, but I think it's amazing. The other thing is Ecclesiastes uh, 412 is a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two stand can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. This community is getting strong and I love it. I love what God is doing here. I give him all the glory. I am just the orchestrator, but you guys play a huge role in this. And that, that really resonated to me because we are building a strong community here of people that are willing to help one another. And and we're here and we're being vulnerable. You know, Kimberly shared that. And, and that can be a really vulnerable thing for people to share our weaknesses, our struggles. Um, but when we learn to share with one another and we are vulnerable, and you guys see me being vulnerable all the time. And I'm grateful that you guys are stepping in and doing this too because... When we allow ourselves to be vulnerable and we are willing to share our struggles, our weaknesses, our celebrations, you know, because some of us aren't very apt to just share that kind of stuff, but when you start doing that, you're stepping out of your comfort zone. You are taking yourself to a new level. You are um, also strengthening yourself because you're willing to share your vulnerabilities and as a result of that, you're strengthening yourself, you're strengthening your resolve, and you're strengthening that weakness because you're going to move from that place. So, Kimberly, thank you for sharing that. And, and know that you are not alone. Um, we all have our weaknesses. We all have our struggles. And um, the more we are willing to strive and to work at doing things and to strengthen those weaknesses, the better we become. Um, being vulnerable, being willing to learn and, and also clearly state that we do not know everything is huge because pride stands in the way of our abilities to learn and grow. And, and this is all, this is all just amazing. So, um, I'm just looking to see, I got the comments, but now let me see if I can open them all up. Only showing me a few, of course. Um, let me see. I can see that Diana also commented on Kimberly's. Okay, here we go. Aha, all right, awesome. Diana said, start small, one drawer, one cabinet, etc. before you start um, know, know your why that will keep you motivated to stay organized. Awesome advice, and you know what? In everything that we struggle with, we need to learn to take one baby step at a time. Things aren't meant to be rushed and to be overwhelming and to be consuming. They are meant to be growing places for ourselves. You know, it took work in the beginning of last year to stay on this. There were a couple days I, I would miss writing in there and then I would go back and catch up and keep going. And that is extremely important. We've got to remember to take baby steps, give ourselves grace. Because the other thing is when we start new habits, it takes time to get those habits in place. And when we backlog or backtrack, we don't show ourselves grace. We get frustrated and angry at ourselves and we, fall short of continuing that desire for that habit because we don't give ourselves grace. So baby steps. All year long, I want you to think about taking baby steps to whatever goals you have set. And to give yourself grace when things happen, 36 inches of snow, uh, getting stuck in the snow. I mean, the night before we got the really heavy snow, it was wet snow and we got stuck. It took us two hours to get it unstuck. So that was some major baby steps because we had to just 
be patient and just keep pushing forward. So don't be discouraged. More than anything, don't be discouraged in your efforts to improve, your efforts to embrace new things, your uh, efforts to uh, step out of your comfort zone. So I can see these now. Um, good morning, Terry. Terry says good morning here in the beginning. Oh, good. Mill is on. Good morning and happy new year to you too. Um, and Terry says I love the pine trees. Yes, they're my favorite. Uh, they're just they're t such tall, tall pines, and they hold the snow. I feel like I'm in Narnia. If you guys haven't seen Narnia, you gotta see Narnia. That's I just feel like I'm living in it. Good morning, Miss Diana. All right, afternoon. Yes, yes. And good morning, Miss Tammy. Um, is it Donia? Is that how you say that? I love the name. Um, oh, good. You're out of, so you're in the warm weather. She's in Nampa. All right. Awesome. And Shelly says, good morning from snowy, stormy Vancouver Island. If it was not closed this morning, it is closing early today. I wondered, I wondered, what are your temps up there? Because I think you were getting the negative temps too. Tammy, what are your temps there? Uh, Montana was supposed to get hammered with some really cold uh, negative temps. Shelly says, we are expecting high winds this afternoon and rain is supposed to start later today. The snow is going to get heavy. Yeah. Um, Shelly doesn't normally get snow. Last year they had gotten snow for the first time in a long time and it closed the island down too. So here's a repeat performance, right Shelly? <laughs> Diana says, organization puts me in my happy place. Me too. I uh, got to get uh, my house, my office organized yesterday and it felt so good because we had guests from the 17th of December till the 6th of January. So it was amazing and it was fun, but I didn't do anything that I normally would be doing during that time, including looking at my electronics. And uh, so I got to step back in there and I was so thankful for that. Tammy says hi to Dennis Hemstreet and I don't see Dennis on here. I don't see his comment, but welcome. I'm glad to have you on here. We have a lot of new people, so I'm really glad for that. And I hope you guys continue to join us throughout the year. Chad says, Lord God, I pray that the gospel of your son Jesus goes out by your Holy Spirit. Open hearts and ears of the people that are here so that they can hear. Bless the people here. May, may your glory be known by your grace alone. Awesome. Awesome, Chad. Thank you. And I, amen. We will talk more about my, uh, my goals for this year with this community. Shelly says, I have been coughing a lot lately, asthma, and now I think it is a cold, trying to stay warm and drinking lots of fluids. Yeah, I hear that. And for some reason today, I am not staying warm. I am freezing. But send in some prayers your way. I know Jim was sick, so evidently he shared. Diana says, I read the free one, and it was very good. She's referring to Millie's book, the, uh, the prequel. It was really good, and the series is just amazing. Um, so definitely, um, if you guys can afford to, and it'd be really awesome if we could get, uh, Millie's books and some of the library apps too. They're just, they're amazing. They are amazing. Um, and Chad says, I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Yes. Chad, that was awesome. And you know, we as Christians need to share the gospel on a regular basis and share the light that we have shining from us. There's so much, so much reason for that. Um, there's so many hurting people in this world, so many lost people in this world, and so many people just looking for community, looking for goodness. And I tell you every time, living the life we live away from the world and outside of the world on a regular basis gives you new vision, gives you clear vision, lets you see things so much clearer than, and, and, I just want to encourage you guys this year. I told you my goal for this year was moving faithfully forward and to do things as Jesus would. And I want to encourage you guys to do the same because there is so much in that, not only for ourselves and our growth and our walk with God, but to save lives. 
Angela says, speaking of journals, I just finished listening to audio book called The Prayer Box by Lisa Wingate. I love the book and highly recommend it. Awesome. Thank you for the share. I will check into that and look that up. I love that. You know, I love to read. I love to nurture my soul. I love to strengthen my walk with God. And I love to be taken to places. And reading good books is really important to me and um, I love being referred to good books so if you guys have books throughout the year that you're reading that you really find useful share them here because I think that it is a really good uh, way to nurture ourselves to um, to improve ourselves and I think that we should be focusing on that every day to improve ourselves to a certain degree every day we always want to be a better self a better person a better a, I just think it's so important you know every day to be better than you were the day before and remember that the focus on that should not be comparing yourself to anybody else but to yourself the day before that's key also um, Diana says I'm a pen and paper and real book no Kindle kind of girl yeah I I have always been that way too but because my only reading time is when we go to bed and I started out using a headlamp and got the aggressive gurs at night when he would stir and I'd look over that way and blind him it was not pretty so I started reading on my phone and um, that was a lot safer so I do read off of my phone, but I do like to have the hard copy of a book in my hand too. So I do struggle with that. Uh, yes, Kimberly, journals tell the story. And you know what? I think it's important for us. You know, I see so many people reading back through their journals and it's so much fun because you read back in times and there's things I've written on my Evernote and things that I've kept track of over the years uh, with Austin and I encourage that if you have young children do a journal or keep track of we have one that's called you just can't make this stuff up it is a note and we just write in the funny oddities that have occurred over the years because those are the things you forget and I just think it's so much fun to be able to look back, see your growth also, see things you've overcome. It's really, really awesome. Terry said he just read that the other night. I'm not sure um, what I was talking about at that time, but I'm wondering if it wasn't maybe one of Millie's books. Um, I'm glad. Uh, share with me what you were reading. Uh, let's see. Um... Woo! Tammy says they were at a negative 15 this morning, didn't go above zero yesterday. Stay warm, sister. I imagine you've got that wood stove cranking. She has a wood cook stove, so she does some magical stuff on that thing. Um, Angela says we've been below freezing temps this week. We were expecting some snow, but it only dusted the passes, etc. Expecting down trees, low temps, and high winds in the on the Oregon coast. Yeesh. Yeah, you know, along with this, now we're we're fortunate that um, we've cleared a lot of the trees here around the house um, for reasons like that. We had a, a year where we got really heavy ice and Mountain Man and I were up in the loft, him and his man cave and me in the she cave and all of a sudden you just heard this crack and it's one of those kind of sounds that just makes you kind of turtle and um, we both sat there waiting for it to hit the house and it hit and it sounded like glass shattered and our trucks were sitting down there and it had just missed the trucks what we heard shattering was just the the ice on the tree but we've cleared very you know pretty big radius around the house so that we don't have to struggle with that um, down at the cabin it's still protected pretty heavily with the with the trees so there's always a chance in high winds and with, with heavy snow but this is normal scenery out here when it snows and it's light snow so it's not as bad but um, thankfully we haven't had too much trouble with that but with you guys that are on the grid that does cause a lot of struggles um, in the regard of down lines and down trees so hopefully you guys are unscathed Angela says whoop there we go we have tried elderberry syrup or have you tried elderberry syrup yes and it's not just syrup it is a very strong tincture and been doing that we did pine nettle um, 
and spearmint from our garden and elderberry tea all day Sunday and Monday we've been we've been hitting the herbs it's just it's a really weird cold this year it is a little bit TMI but it's very thick and it just lingers and it's it doesn't go deep into your chest but it's just it's you can't get it out and it's just a drag so we've been we've been doing all kinds of heavy stuff been really oiling up also I've been using a lot of breathe and uh, on guard uh, doing the diffusers I also have a uh, oh shoot I just went blank um, I have a machine that clear ozone I have an ozone machine that we run too to kill all the germs that are floating around and trust me when the mountain boy was here we had it all going on because he had it bad and thankfully he got better and then left us with it so okay Terry said the Bible verse you read earlier yeah isn't that an amazing Bible verse I just think that's very fitting for us um, whoop. you guys are messaging so it keeps popping the screen on me Shelly says I do not have any I was looking around for some but then my fall ended with surgery so my preserve was done preserving was done with the weather today I am NOT going anywhere I've been using eucalyptus oil and hot water to help the sinuses I'm going to see what I can do this this year awesome okay so I see that you guys were chatting and another I will I will do a list of some herbs down below good morning Ken um, I will do a list of some other herbs and concoctions you guys can do I have a really good recipe for cough drops too um, but eucalyptus is really good for keeping the sinuses open you can also do a hot soak with eucalyptus um, just make sure that the oil is really spread out and not centralized when you get in because that will be pretty harsh on the body um, Terry says getting ready to move next weekend closer to my wife she wanted me to come closer so she could help me with my doctor appointment still praying for God's healing in our marriage and not giving up on us thank you all for your prayers and support oh Terry that's really awesome I'm so glad to hear that I'm so so glad to hear that that's good news that's good news and we've never ceased praying for you we will continue to pray and I know God is going to do wonderful things there how are you feeling by the way um, Angela said try mountain rose herbs online for dried elderberries and actually Shelly I can send you some I don't know how fast they'll get there but I can send you some I need to make a trip to the post office tomorrow if we can get out so I will pop some in the mail to you I have a lot of dried elderberries um, and yes mountain rose herbs are amazing you can go to trailwilderness.com slash MRH and you will find them um, they are a great resource if you can't get your hands on the herbs you're looking for or in Shelly's case like I've been in previously when you can't and aren't capable of going to get the things yourself so um, and they're they're um, inexpensive you know I mean it's 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 a I look at that as my health insurance right there that's how we focus is our herbals and our food are our, our uh, health insurance Diana said it's taken me weeks to get past the coughing. Yeah, that's the hardest. That's rough on the body. And uh, Angela was talking to Shelly. Um, let's see here. Okay. So I think I got through all the comments. It's going a little jumpy. I don't know why it's not showing up on this app today. But I'm glad you guys are all here. I'm glad we are conversing. That is just, that's what makes this really awesome is that it's not just one-sided. I love getting your feedback. I love communicating with you guys. And um, Kimberly, you mentioned about um, struggling with organization. I think this is a great way to start. Um, one of the things I do, if you're referring to organization as far as keeping track of things or if it's just organization in the home, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go over this anyway. Like Diana said, Diana is the organization queen and, and her advice is very good and solid. Just take baby steps. And, and just focus a little bit at a time and just keep your eyes on the prize on your main goal and and why you're doing it and just keep working progressively working at it now as far as keeping organized um, with your schedule I like the month at a glance because that's where it's all at I keep it all on my calendars and and 
The reason I like that is so that I can open this up and I know what's going on for the whole month. I can keep flipping through my calendar and see. I just recorded something for May the other day. I have an interview with Melissa Norris that day. Um, February, we have some stuff. So I can just go through my calendar and my month at a glance and be able to see what is ahead. I did this also because this is our last winter here. We are in a situation right now where we aggressively need to get out of here. With 36 inches of snow, it's gonna be pretty hard, but we need to get this sold. So I need to be able to keep track of everything and quick and easy and just grabbing this makes it so much nicer. Notice I also have a clip so that when my week at a glance is up, I can clip into my next week at a glance. It is attached to my month at a glance that I am currently working in so that I'm not having to flip, flip, flip. I want quick, easy, and I want um, to be able to uh, quickly access things um, and not waste my time. The other thing is then on the week at a glance part, I write all the details, so I just write a snippet in the month at a glance and the details um, are in here. Now, one of the things that, um, the interview that I have with Melissa, that's actually on her show, and she will be interviewing me, and I needed to keep track of um, the materials uh, as far as how to connect with her, where the interview will be held, how it's being held. A lot of information, so I didn't want to write it down here. What I did choose to do is send it to Nosebee for that day with the links so that I can go into my um, app, quickly click on where I need to go, and be able to find the information. But I have myself a note in here um, where to access that information. So I'm not going back in my email and having to search for it. So when you can keep yourself organized in that regard, it makes it so much easier that you're not hunting and pecking. It took me a couple extra seconds to send that email into Nosby so that it's there. And, um, but, but it'll save me in the long run. So those couple extra seconds I took and slowed down and did at that exact moment will save me in May from having to search for things. So when you start getting your mind working in that regard that you're not having to go back and search for things, um, and there might be other ways that you wanna do that. Maybe in your email you wanna set up um, a tag for future events and put your emails in there so you only have to go into there to look for it if you don't wanna use another app. But find and come up with a way to make it easy to keep yourself organized and just take those baby steps. So there's some lessons to help you keep your date book organized and your things organized. Another thing I do is I came up with little like, like for example, for Trayer Wilderness. Anything Trayer Wilderness in my calendar on my month at a glance has a TW in front of it. Kind of like a hashtag, if you will. So I know what these events are for. Um, TC is for Trayer Construction. Um, I always had an AT for Austin, for Austin's things. So that way I could look in here and see whose things they are, what I need to do in regard to them, that kind of thing. So if you have children, you know, you can come up with a little coding. Um, you might want to choose to use different colored markers or whatever. Whatever works and resonates with your brain to keep yourself organized. Um, and the other thing is, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna share something with you. This is really funny. I, I am anal. I evidently do have OCD as well. Um, I always like to keep things organized and neat. Always have. Well, I started putting these labels on. They're stickers um, that go on so that you have the tabs on here. Well, I wanted them in order and I wanted them nice and neat so they came down and then went back up and came back down and I was trying to do it and we were, we were um, watching something at the same time and I was also following something in the book and they went off. They're not all perfect and you know what? I chuckled and I said to myself, you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be functional. And that's the thing that we need to step away from. Oftentimes we're so worried about perfection and the need for things to be perfect that we lose sight of what our goal is and what we're trying to accomplish and we waste time trying to make them perfect. So right here 
is my daily reminder that I don't need things perfect. I need them functional. So, and that's why I left them go. I could have taken them off and put them back on. And you know what? It's time for me to be functional, not perfect. None of us are perfect. And we all strive to do well, but it's okay to not be perfect. And it's okay to have things that aren't perfect. We need to focus more on the why and the, and, um, the functionality of things than the perfection of things. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be striving to do things well and do things good. But if our main focus is perfection and it keeps us from reaching our goals because we're so worried about the perfection of it, we're losing out. We're missing out. Are you following me on that? How many of you have been there? How many of you have not accomplished things because you were striving for the perfection. I keep having these things coming across my screen, so I'm trying to clear them off. So I'm just going to jump back and see if you guys are leaving any comments here so I can try to field them while we are talking. Terry says he's feeling okay today. I have to talk to the radiologist Thursday, and we'll be checking on... The infusion treatments once I get moved. Still feel uneasy about the radiation. Physical therapy is going good also. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear things are going well. Um, yes, I would be really nervous about radiation or chemo myself. That would be something I would greatly shy away from. But the infusion treatments would be awesome if you're able to do them. And I would, oh, I'm going to keep praying that that is an option for you because it is so uh, less harmful on the body. So we will be praying for you for that. Keep in touch with me and keep me posted. And I'm just so glad to hear you in such good spirits. God is truly working in your life and it's been so amazing to watch. So I'm, I'm so blessed to be a part of it, Terry. Thank you for sharing it all with me. Okay, now I want to share something else with you guys in regard to organization, something else that's really important to me. And I, I happen to listen, I love listening to podcasts when I'm doing things. I was shoveling snow the other day and I was listening to the Quote of the Day show with Sean Croxton and his stuff is just amazing and it feeds me in such a big way. And I was introduced to Jay Morrison. Jay Morrison has one heck of a story. If you've never heard of him, you need to go look, look him up. Um, I will put the link to the uh, podcast below um, when we're done. He, he grew up in a very horrible way, um, in a very horrible home life. Um, his mother was a drug dealer and a drug addict. And uh, at a young age, he felt necessary to be making the money to secure and take care of his family. He had siblings also. Anyway, he came, he has gone to the top from a very low place. And he has, uh, he, he was on the streets selling drugs at a very early age. He was in jail at a very early age, um, but he had the internal power to pull himself out of that place and to take him and his family uh, to much greater places. And one of the things he was talking about is the why that drives us. What is your why? What is your why in life? And, and what is it that drives you? What I'm going to ask you this today, and I want you guys to think about it. If you want to answer today, great. If not, I'm going to bring this back up next week. Um, what would you give the world if nothing was holding you back? If finances weren't an issue, if, if nothing was an issue, nothing, that you didn't have to worry about anything, what drives you? What would be the one thing that you would do in life to make a difference? There's, there's so many that I could answer there, but deep down, and, and I'm sure you guys know this of me, I just have a desire to educate. I have a desire to help. So um, that would cert that is certainly my why. Um, my why is to continue to find ways to help others. And um, the other thing is that I want to point out is our why should be to leave a legacy to max out our potential and leave this world a better place, contributing all we have to give. That is from Jay Morrison, and um, that is what I gained from his podcast. And I just thought it was really awesome because so many of us are seeking 
joy and excuse me and happiness and 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 are seeking something there is something missing in our lives and we are seeking it and the beginning of the year we put in these new um, resolutions and want to try to attain these new things but I want to share something with you today what's truly missing in our lives is nothing more than Jesus and I am going to boldly say that I watch our numbers on Facebook dropping rapidly because I mention Jesus and I mention God and you know what I'm okay with that rapid number loss but I hope that it when they leave I have planted some sort of a seed that later in their life will grow I hate to see people leave but I understand why and I'm not going to stop being who I am and I'm not going to stop mentioning Jesus and God because you guys have watched me over the last four years regain my life. Many of you have been following me through that journey. I was flat on my back. I almost lost my life. Those type of incidents change you. And I was already a, um, a faithful person. I was already in relationship with God. But that time inspired me and created a huge closeness and a huge desire to be close to God. And that is where it's at. You know, we, I, I was right there with the rest of you seeking my joy and happiness, but I was seeking it in books and in, in what I was accomplishing and things. And it wasn't the joy and happiness that comes from the relationship with God. And when I found the joy and happiness in the relationship with God, because I deepened it, I found the joy and happiness I was looking for in other things. So as Chad said, and as he prayed over this uh, Facebook Live, that you guys see and find the gospel of Jesus because that is where it's at. That is where your growth is going to come from. And that is where your why is going to manifest. But it's going to take a close walk and a communion with, with Jesus for all of that stuff to come together. So I want to encourage you guys on a daily basis to not only make your habit of journaling something that becomes a constant, but also make your relationship with Christ something that continuously grows and manifests. Because that is where you're going to find everything that you're seeking and I know many of you that are joining me can attest to that. So what I have and what many of you also have is offered to all of us. Jesus died on the cross and instantly we were all given the same gift, the gift of eternal life. The gift of his goodness, his grace, his mercy, his love, his constant love, regardless what we've done, regardless, it doesn't matter. That is the beauty. On the cross, he forgave all of our sins so that we could have that relationship. The only thing that keeps us from that relationship is us. We need to choose to seek it and choose to accept it. He's given it to all of us. And I have jumped on it. And I know many of you have. But if you are uncertain of that relationship with Jesus and you haven't accepted that, but you want to know more, reach out to me anytime at survive at treyerwilderness.com. If you also have prayer requests, you can email me at prayers at treyerwilderness.com. And we will put them up on uh, our, our weekly list for people to pray for. You don't have to give the details. Just let us know that you need prayer. But I want to share that with you guys to let you know that you have the same opportunities I do. And I know my why. I know I am walking out my why. I feel very full and fulfilled. And I feel God's presence every day in my life. I can look out and see his presence every day in my life. Because I choose to look for it. Because I choose to accept it. Because I choose to be better today 
personally than I was yesterday. And in order to do that, I need to seek him. I need to uh, be in relationship with him to be able to improve who I am. And I want you guys to have that too. It is a priceless thing. And when you can find your joy and happiness finally that you've been seeking in all the wrong places, when you find it simply by having that relationship, it is an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. So if you have questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. We have some very large prayers requests this week. And um, I'm going to share them with you. Um, I'd like you to pray for the Jepson family. Um, a dear friend of mine, Delbert, uh, passed away on November 12th. He was a client, but he was a incredible friend. Um, an incredible person. Had a gr just... Oh. Just talking to him shared goodness. It was an amazing thing. And he is greatly missed by a lot of people, but his wife and daughters um, are uh, missing him um, and progressing. And they had a dear family. Hmm, my mountain man is calling. So that's a good sign. He has made it to town. Um, but I am going to have to jump off of here. I'm going to say a prayer. Please see our prayer list below and pr please, please lift these people in prayer. The family friend is Gus. Um, he was in a terrible snowmobile accident on January 5th or 6th. The Gessner family is also on there. They lost a, a an 18 year old son to a four wheeler accident. Um, and everybody else on the list needs prayers. Mark is going through his uh, um, cancer and he is coming back from Seattle and is in need of prayer for extreme healing. So pray for those on the list, guys. Um, thank you for joining me today. I'm sorry to cut it short, but I need to communicate with him. And um, just read over the notes below and I will feed you some more. Okay. Actually, he just texted me to tell me he made it. He realized that he was just supposed to tell me he made it. So I think we're good. Um, okay. Um, so pray for Mark and his family as they are going through that. And, and pray for the rest of the people on our list. Those were our big um, prayers. Gus is in the hospital in ICU with some major head trauma. Um, and I'd love to see him be one of God's miracles to walk out of this situation. Um, but please pray for him and pray for the Jepsons as they deal with that. And um, I want to remind you guys today also that um, life is a gift given to us by God. What we do with it is our gift to him. And that is care of Christina Sutter um, over at Lone Star Farmstead. I think that is just such a great quote. And I want to encourage you guys to um, think about that. And that's how we can always consider what would Jesus do when we go to do anything this year. Um, I had a couple things here that I was going to read to you. And I want to just see. Let me just see here real quick. Actually, I think what I'm going to read is out of here today. This is the book The Mountain Boy Got Me, and uh, it is Love Out Loud by Joyce Myers, and I just want to share, um, this was um, on my birthday, and I it just really resonated with me. Um, what do you want? Exodus 33, 13, show me now your way that I may know you. And consider that this nation is your people. I believe there are two things that reveal more about your character and your relationship with God than anything else. One is the way you treat other people. The other is the desires of your heart, meaning the things you want most in life. Several times in scripture, people ask God to give them the desires of their hearts. God gave Moses the opportunity to ask for his most fervent desires in Exodus 33. Moses' response was that he wanted to become more and more deeply and intimately acquainted with God and that God would consider his people the nation Moses was responsible for leading. 
And I think that that is such a strong thing for us to have a desire of our heart. Because when we grow in that relationship with God, and we do have other desires of the heart, God will help us reach them and, and uh, meet them. So think about this. Moses had witnessed breathtaking historic miracles. He was there when God parted the Red Sea and brought water from a rock. I'll tell you what, that is one of the strongest stories in the Bible and one of the things, one of the places I would have just loved to experience. Could you imagine walking through the sea and seeing, you know, the underwater life right next to you as you're walking through that situation? I just can't even begin to imagine. But you got to remember, God can work these miracles. God worked these miracles then. He can work these miracles now and he can work them through you. But Moses didn't ask to see greater miracles. What he wanted most of all was to know God better. Part of learning to love anyone is getting to know that person. The same is true with God. The more we become acquainted with him, the more intimate relationship with him we can enjoy. This happens as we hunger for his presence. Seek his truth through his word. Show love to others and spend time with him every day. So, do you hunger more than anything else to know God more intimately? I hope so. God has no favorites, but he does have intimates. Are you one of them? I just want you to consider that today because I was going to share other things, but God shared that with me this morning. And I really think that that is the greatest truth and, and the greatest thing that we need to focus on is our relationship with God this year. All the rest of it will fall into place. I told you this is my last winter here. It is my last winter in one of two ways. Either we lose our home or we sell it. End of story. I am faithfully moving forward and trusting God for the outcome, regardless what it is. I am also prepared to trust God for what is ahead and, and how it all unravels. So that, as an example, if we did lose our home before it sells, that I will trust him to carry us to wherever it is we need to go from here and to walk out the circumstances of that situation. I trust him fully. I have no fear. I have no worry. I am faithfully going forward. I want you guys to use that hashtag this year, pound sign faithfully forward, as you're going through the good and the bad times and as you are seeing God moving you from place to place, as you are growing in him and learning to walk away from fear and worry and walk forward trusting him to lead you to the places you wanna go. And I want to see you guys doing things the way Jesus would. You know, when we keep that in the back of our mind and we keep him in the front of our mind, good things are going to happen. And I share all this because the mountain man and I decided last year wholeheartedly that we were going to be walking out God's will. We were going to focus on what God wanted for us, even if it was intimidating and scary in our already scary circumstances. And we did that a lot of times last year. We walked out some scary stuff while we were already in a scary place. And people thought we were nuts, said that we weren't using common sense, said that God wouldn't ask that of us. But God does. God asks us to do courageous and crazy things. And when we do those things and, and do them wholeheartedly with our faith and trust in Him, He takes us to great places, not only in our growth, but he blesses us and he has blessed us tremendously over and over again. And I know you guys have seen it. So may our transparency be a model and an inspiration to you. I give him all the glory for everything we do, everything we say, everything that happens here. And I want to be able to see you guys growing in. This. Okay. He has called again. So I'm going to say a prayer. Wish you guys well. Okay. Papa, I just thank you for this time with everyone. I thank you for what you're going to do in each of our lives. I thank you that you have blessed us greatly and that you will bless each and every one that has been watching. 
I thank you for your open arms to all of us that you have removed our sin. You look at us regardless of what it is we've done and you love us just the same and that we should accept that love and put our past behind us and move forward, focusing on you, moving faithfully forward. And I just ask that you'd wrap your loving arms around everyone here, bless those that need it, answer those that are those prayers of that are on our prayer list and just show your grace and your mercy to everyone. Help them to see your blessings, help them to see the growth as they continue to move forward this year focusing on you. And help them to find their joy and happiness in you and, and their why. And I just ask that you give them courage, strength, and encouragement along this as we travel together forward. So thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives. We love you, and we ask this in your holy and precious name in Jesus. Amen. Okay. All right. I'm going to go. I've got to talk to my man. I'm so grateful you guys joined me. I hope that you got something from this today, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget to check out the uh, podcast 202 on Friday. I love you all, and God bless. <laughs>